Well, one of the things that we spent a lot of time talking about, of course, were cells, batteries, and modules. And right here, this is a front battery pack on a VW Super Beetle. And you can see that there are 15 cells, and they're wired in series. Okay? So, they are in a metal box, which has an ABS liner. And there's ABS between each of the cells. So the cells are all individually insulated, and they're mounted in the vehicle in a metal box in the same location as the original fuel tank. There's also another battery box with 20 cells behind the rear seat. In the last episode, we talked about switches. Right here you can see there's a, a main disconnect switch and an inertia switch to the right of it. In the rear of the vehicle, we've got the motor. This is a three-phase AC induction motor. And we've got the AC inverter, or motor controller. Um, and you can see that they're wired together with three cables. Those are the three phases, U, V, and W. There's also some wires right here that go to the controller also, which uh, come from the encoder and tell the controller what the uh, position of the armature is, as well as RPMs and motor temperature. We have power coming in to the controller, and this is coming from the most positive, from that switch we looked at a moment ago up front. It's the power coming in, goes through the main contactor, and to our controller here, the positive point of the controller, goes out the negative, goes through the shunt, and this is the negative most point in our battery pack, which is behind the rear seat. Some of the things that the controller connects to, there's a KSI signal. If you go to that episode, we talk about those things, and we, I believe, talked about some of the safety features we put in series with that signal. Um, but, you know, there's input control circuits, and then there's some output ones. And we talk about all those, and those are right here in this plug on the bottom. Then we talked about switches and relays. So here's some relays. I'll give you real world examples. This one right here is the KSI relay. This one, when we turn on the ignition, if you know the inertia switch isn't triggered, if we don't, you know, if we have enough voltage in our pack, so forth. If all the, you know, the, the vehicle's not plugged in, being charged, all those things are uh, a go, then it turns on this relay, and that takes power. This this uh, KSI input is uh, pack voltage, so it takes pack voltage, and, and it goes through the relay contacts and goes to the KSI input. And this is the KSI input right here to the controller. The relay next to it, that's a single pole double throw, and that's the reverse relay. And so, whenever we push the reverse button, which is in the console on this vehicle, this relay comes on and it takes this white wire, which is forward in the normally closed position. This then uh, opens that up and this closes. The normally open now becomes closed and that puts it in reverse, which is the yellow wire. Next to it, is a single pole, single throw relay. This one also is activated with the reverse switch in the console, and it takes power, ignition uh, switch 12 volts, and uh, then sends that to the reverse lights. So that when you put it in reverse, electronically, the reverse light would come on, okay? So just an example of relays, and we talked about relays and contactors. This is a contactor. 
we call it the main contactor, and that is switched by the controller. And um, so, yeah. We talked about cooling. That was another thing we talked about. Um, motor and controller cooling. This one is air cooled, so it draws air in the back end here, and it flows out the front. So air goes through the motor to cool it, air cooled motor. The controller is liquid cooled, and so we have a coolant reservoir right here. Coolant flows out of the reservoir, goes to a pump, that sits where the original starter sat in this particular vehicle. So we put the coolant pumps on these, so it's the low point in the system. And it goes through the pump, comes up, and goes through a chill plate, which is, uh, you can't see it's on the back side of the, of the controller, but it goes through the chill plate, wicking away heat from the controller. It then goes through a radiator and there's a radiator and fans below here and then once it uh, leaves the radiator it comes up and returns up here in our reservoir and that's a complete cooling system loop then so just you know like I said real world example of the things that we've discussed in the first six episodes of our beginner's guide to an EV conversion if you have any questions, let us know. I um, recommend that you send any questions to info at ev4unow.com. Um, and if you have any suggestions for other videos uh, in addition to this series that we're working through, appreciate if you let us know. You can leave those in the comments below. And uh, hope to see you next time.